Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to make professional looking reusable cover pages for Microsoft Excel for when you go to print your worksheets. So here we've got a nice looking cover page and we can have this print off. So if I hit control P, you can see what it's going to look like and we can have it print off for whichever worksheets we want within the workbook. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Now there's a lot of little tiny tricks to get this to look just how we want it to. And the first thing we're going to do is go to a new worksheet and we're going to try and recreate this guy right here. So let's open up a new sheet. Okay, get this guy down here. And this is the regular interface for Excel, which really doesn't help us very much for printing. Because uh, it's hard to tell what it's actually going to look like. So the first step is to go to the View tab, and from there, click Page Layout. This is going to show you what it's going to look like when you print it. So you can see, if we zoom out here, little printed pages. And that's going to show us the boundaries. So we can see which would be the first column and the last column, and how many rows and cells are going to fit on a printed page. As well, from this interface, from the page layout view, you can add headers. Just click up here anywhere, and you're going to get a bunch of options. A little design tab is going to show up, and a bunch of options where you can do stuff like that. Now, I'm not going to cover that here. It's very easy to figure out how to put what you want to put in headers and footers once you know how to get there. So view tab, page layout, and you can do that. We're going to cover here just a bunch of little formatting things. So the first thing is, how do we get a nice, neat, and centered title? Because, yes, we could go here and then enter it, and let's say, my title, it looks nice, it looks neat, it looks centered, but it probably isn't actually centered, and if we have a much larger title, like, this is my spreadsheet title, it's going to start to look bad pretty darn quickly, especially when we format it. So let's say we go to the Home tab. Cell styles. I really hate the cell styles, but what you can do with cell styles is use it as sort of a starting point. So we can click title and then we can hit bold. Do we like the color? Yes, let's keep it. Now let's make it a little bit larger, say 24. And very quickly you can see the formatting is horrendous. So one really good little trick is you can, let's just move this guy out of the way. Actually, I didn't have to do that. But go ahead and select the entire row for that printed page. Select those, go to the Home tab, and click Merge and Center. It's really going to be a godsend when formatting stuff for printing. So Merge and Center. And now let's grab this guy and pop him up here. Okay, yes, you're being very annoying. So let's just cut it. So do the Merge and Center before you format everything. Now let's go up here and paste it in. OK. And then now I'm going to redo some formatting. Let's just make it big and bold. And go ahead and delete this guy so we don't have to mess with the height. OK. So merge and center. Now we've got a perfectly centered title. We can change the size of it. And it fits nice and neat. Let's say financial. Analysis for 2018. Now let's do something a little interesting. This is a little bit of a trick to get spacing to work because like I said, spacing isn't going to work just like it works for Word. So let's go here and let's do the thing where I said branches covered. I'm going to hit Control Enter, Control B, Control U. And now I can do Branch A, Branch B, Branch C, and so on. But I don't like the spacing right here. So what's a little trick to get some nice spacing is grab these guys, pull them down, and leave a little spacing row right here. And now what you can do is just shrink it. So we can shrink that. And that leaves us a nice, neat little space right there. And yes, it doesn't look good with grid lines, but remember, when you print, the grid lines by default aren't going to show. So if we want to see what it's going to look like when it's printed, go back to the View tab and uncheck Grid Lines. And you can see you don't even see them anymore. So just adjust the spacing for how you want it to look 
when there are no grid lines. And what you can do if you want to be consistent, let's say we're going to do this in a couple places, because I believe, what was the next one I had? Analysts, yes, with Michael Scott, Judge Dredd. Let's go ahead and do that. Analysts. Okay. Judge Dredd, Thanos, Michael Scott. Okay, underline, and then move those guys down. I forgot to do that. Now, let's say we want the spacing to be consistent here and here. Well, an easy way to do that is to select the row, Home tab, go over here to Format, and then choose Row Height. And then Row Height, we can choose whatever we want here. Let's say we want it to be 0.10, hit OK. And now we can go down here and we could select them at the same time if we wanted and just right click them and go to row height as well. And then we can do 0.10. And now we have the exact same spacing. So a lot of you, if you work in offices, you're going to have a boss that says it has to be exactly like this. Everything has to look the same, blah, 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 blah. This is how you do it. You use little spacing rows and then just select each one at the same time, right click row height and then change the height at the same time for all of them. And you can do the same thing with columns. So let us say that, so let's just call it topic, and this is some information. So maybe I remove this bold, and now I have a little spacer column, and I can go ahead and shrink this dude down, or I could right click it and do column width, and input that here just like we did for the rows. We could do point, let's say, 1, 5. And now for topic, what you can do is I could leave it left aligned, or I could go up here and I could make it right aligned, or I could make it centered. All you have to remember is that, once again, once we kill the grid lines, it's not going to look so goofy. So grid lines are dead, and now it looks like that. If you want, still left align it, no problems. So the main thing is you're kind of just going to have to try a lot of different things to get the formatting that you want. But little helpful tips, helper columns, helper rows, it's going to add a lot of spacing. Make sure you do this on an empty worksheet, of course. And now I want to go to the print preview window, window and show you some cool little things. Let's hit control P so we can see what it's going to look like here. Now let's say that you wanted to center the data on the page. Well, of course, if we go back here and we zoom out, you can see that this is not centered on the page. So you can move the data down and you could arrange it exactly how you want it to be here. So we can pull the data down, move it over, make it bigger with a font. You can do all of that. That's probably the preferred way to do it. However, there are also a couple little tricks that you can do. You may know this if you watched some of my other printing tutorials. If we go to, let's just do it when we're in print preview, because that's where we can see the changes. Control P. And we go down here to Margins, Custom Margins, and then Center on Page. Check horizontally and vertically, and watch this guy change over here. Now everything is centered. Now there's another really cool thing. So let's say you have it formatted exactly how you want it. You spend hours doing it, and your boss says, damn it, make it bigger, okay? Because it's just too small. It doesn't fit enough, enough of the page. Well, really cool thing that we can do here is if we go to, let's actually remove the centering for a moment, horizontal and a vertical, okay, is let's go to where it says no scaling by default and go to custom scaling options. And then we can go to where it says scaling adjust to, we can pop it up to let's say 130, hit okay. And you can see that it got a lot bigger. So it did mess up to spacing, yes. And we do have two pages now, and I'll show you how to fix that. But it makes it so it's a lot bigger without having to change all the data down here. The problem here is this cell is merged across, which is what makes it so two pages are going to print. So we can go to the Home tab, unmerge these guys, go ahead, remerge these guys, hit Control P again. And you can see it's formatted much better and only on one page. So now it's larger and we didn't have to deal with anything in the spreadsheet to make it like that.
And you can get to those options really easily here as well. You don't just have to be on the print preview window. Go to page layout, go to the little, well actually scale to fit is right here. So you can change the size. However, you're not going to see it so much here. You do when we're in the page layout view, but we're, if we're in the regular Excel view, not much is going to change. So you could play with the scaling here and see how it's going to look. And if we go here to the little button, we get to the page setup window, we can go to margins, and we can here do center on page horizontally and vertically, and also get to the print preview window from here. Now, one thing before I forget, almost forgot to mention, it's very important that you figure out how you want your printed page to be before you get to this point. So do you want it to be portrait like this? Or do you want it to be landscape like this? Because you can see now when we did it landscape, we got three extra columns. If I zoom out, it'll be a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about. So this is landscape and this is portrait. But since it adds extra columns when we do it this way, it is going to mess up the formatting. So once again, we have to readjust the merge and center and move these guys around and do all that jazz. So figure out your orientation before you spend hours working on the formatting and the background colors and yada, 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 and all that jazz. And it's really going to save you uh, some headaches later on. Now, once you have this guy and you have him formatted just how you want, I'll remove the grid lines just to make it look a little better here. Well, how are we going to print it with the other workbooks or with the other worksheets? Very simple. So now we have our cover page on sheet two. And let's say we want to go and print the data worksheet with a cover page. All you have to do is click one worksheet and then click the other one that you want to be printed with it. Hit control and click it. And as long as the cover page is the leftmost tab, it's going to be the first page that prints. We can now go to control P. And here under settings, it can be print active sheets, print entire workbook or print selection. And you want to print active sheets. So when we hit control and clicked both, it made both of them active. So now we have our cover page. And when we go to the right, we have our data page. Now the data page doesn't look so good in this orientation, but that's okay. The point is now we have our cover page and it's nice and cool. So you just click whichever one you want, control, click the other one, control P. Usually by default, it's going to print both. If it doesn't, select print active sheets under settings. And what you can do, this brings up a good point. So this data and this data is going to look better in landscape. So what you might have is something like this, cover page, portrait, and then you might do another one and call it cover page landscape. And that way, depending on how your data is going to be printed, you've got both options already made and you just choose which one is best. You hit print, go to the printer, and everything is ready for you. You don't have to do anything separate. Don't have to waste so much time. So that's it for one of my favorite little tricks for making reusable cover pages in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.